let's look at some examples. For our first example, we've taken something very simple. This is a third, a third order linear constant coefficient homogeneous differential equation. d3y dt3 plus 3d2y dt2 plus 3dy dt plus y equals 0. How do we find the complete general solution to this homogeneous linear differential equation? Well, we can look at the characteristic equation, which is just going to be z cubed plus 3z squared plus 3z plus 1 equals 0. And here's what we can do. We can factor this entirely as z plus 1 cubed equals 0. In other words, z equals minus 1 is the only root, and it has multiplicity 3. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that y1 equals e to the minus 1 times t is a solution. What are the other solutions? Because this root has multiplicity 3, we also have a solution y2, which is t e to the minus t. And we also have a solution y3, which is t squared e to the minus t. And these three solutions y1, y2, and y3 are a fundamental set of solutions. It takes a little fun with algebra, but you should try to check with this one example that the Ronskian of y1, y2, y3, which is just the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix, y1, y1 prime, y1 double prime, y2, y2 prime, y2 double prime, and y3, y3 prime, y3 double prime, that this Ronskian is in fact never zero. And then you'll see this is a fundamental set of solutions, so the general solution is y equals c1 e to the minus t plus c2 t e to the minus t plus c3 t squared e to the minus t, where c1, c2, and c3 are any real numbers. I want to go back and address one other thing. You might not recognize that this polynomial factors nicely as z plus 1 cubed. Are there any tricks that you could use to help you factor a cubic like this? I would say there's no cubic formula, but that's not true. There actually is a cubic formula, but nobody learns it. We don't teach it in any of our classes. High schools never teach it. It's just not something anybody learns, and it's horrible mess and messy and difficult to deal with. However, there are some tricks that will help you find rational roots for polynomials. Here's a neat trick. If the coefficients are integers, which they are here, then any rational root has to have its numerator be a divisor of the constant term 1 here, and the denominator has to be a divisor of the, coefficient, of the lead coefficient, in this case also 1. A simple thing is if it's a monic polynomial, meaning the lead coefficient is just 1, if you're looking for a rational root, it will have to be an integer root, and that integer will have to be a factor of this constant term, 1. The only factors of 1 are 1 and minus 1. You can't have any other integer factors of 1. So all you have to do is check to see if 1 is a root, which it's not, or minus 1. Well, you can easily plug in minus 1, and you'll see minus 1 as a root. Once you plug in minus 1 and see that when you plug in z equals minus 1, this thing is 0, so this minus 1 is a root of that polynomial, you can then take that factor z plus 1 and divide this cubic by z plus 1, and you're left with a quadratic. In this case, that quadratic will 
be z plus 1 quantity squared, but whatever it is, you're left with a quadratic, which you can then use the quadratic formula on to completely factor things. So if you ever have a cubic like this, or even more complicated than this, if you can just find one root through some nice trick, if there happen to be any nice integer or rational roots, once you find one root, you can factor out the corresponding linear factor, and you'll be left with a quadratic, which you can then factor completely using the quadratic formula. In general, factoring high-degree polynomials can be quite messy, if not totally impossible. In fact, there's a, a theorem uh, from Galois theory that actually tells you, even though we have a quadratic formula and a cubic formula, and there's actually even a quartic formula for fourth-degree polynomials, the theorem tells us for fifth-degree polynomials and higher, there simply cannot exist a formula. And by a formula, I mean one that gives you an algebraic expression to, in terms of the coefficients to tell you what the roots are, to find the roots of a fifth-degree polynomial or higher in general. And yet still, I want to look at an example here where we have a sixth-degree, uh, sorry, sixth-order linear homogeneous constant coefficient differential equation where the sixth derivative of y plus three times the fifth derivative plus three times the fourth derivative minus the third derivative minus four times the second derivative minus two times the derivative equals zero. That has characteristic equation. You can just pull down the coefficients. It'll be z to the sixth plus three z to the fifth plus three z to the fourth minus z cubed minus four z squared minus two z equals zero. And if we're going to find solutions to this differential equation, we're going to have to factor this. Well, here's what you can do. You can ask your computer to factor it, and if there are nice roots, your computer will be able to find it and factor things. That's one solution. Another way to do it is look for the obvious factors. Notice that there's no constant term, so in fact one factor is just z. That's this here. So here's what I would do if I had this polynomial and I needed to factor it. I'd first factor out the z, and we'd be left with a fifth-degree polynomial, which would look like just like this, but all the uh, exponents would be one lower. Then I'd say, are there, and let me write that here. So this polynomial is equal to z times z to the fifth plus 3z to the fourth uh, plus 3z cubed minus c squared minus 4z minus 2. Now, how can we factor this fifth degree polynomial? Again, there's not going to be any quintic formula. No such thing can exist. If we're lucky, there will be integer solutions, because here you see the coefficients are integers, and it's a monic polynomial. But if they're integer solutions, they have to be factors of minus 2, which is the same as saying they're factors of 2. The only things they could be are plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. So we could check that. And here's something neat. If you actually check that, you'll see that 1 is a root, minus 1 is a root. So you can factor out a z plus 1, you can factor out a z minus 1, and you'll see that z plus 1, when you do that, is a, a root again. So actually, z plus 1 is a, I'm sorry, the negative 1, which leads to the linear factor z plus 1. Uh, negative 1 is actually a root of multiplicity 2. So I'll leave you guys to play with this to try to see if, if you could then factor using just those tricks, and you'll find you can factor the 6th degree polynomial polynomial into the linear factor z times z minus 1 times z plus 1 squared times this quadratic z squared plus 2 z minus 2. Now over the real numbers that doesn't factor anymore at all but using the quadratic formula you can see that this qu this quadratic term has roots and we've looked at this particular one before minus 1 plus i and minus 1 minus i. Not surprisingly, you know, those are complex conjugates. So if you want to completely factor this polynomial, you could write it as z times z minus 1 times z plus 1 squared times z minus this number here, uh, minus 1 plus i times, let me move things over a bit, just getting in the way, and then that would have to be multiplied by c minus minus 1 minus i, like that. So here's a complete factorization into linear factors for this 6th degree polynomial. 
<clears throat> so here's the characteristic equation. I've listed the roots here. Remember, minus 1 is a root of multiplicity 2. What does that tell us about solutions to this? This is the exact same um, sixth order linear homogeneous constant coefficient differential equation. Well, because 0 was a root, e to the 0t, I'll call it y1, is e to the 0t, which is just the constant function 1. So the constant function 1 is a solution. And it should be pretty obvious that's correct, because, of course, for the constant function 1, all of these derivatives are 0. And that equals 0. Because 1 is a root, the function y2 equals e to the t is a solution. And you can easily check that. Because the, the number minus 1 is a root of multiplicity 2, I can write y3 equals e to the minus t, and y4 equals t e to the minus t. Those are both solutions to this differential equation. Check these. It doesn't take too much work. It takes a little bit, especially to differentiate this six times. But you can do that. It's not that horrible. And check that these are both, each one individually is a solution there. Now we have these two complex roots. And everything behaves just like before because we have these two complex conjugate complex conjugates, which are roots, we can just write down immediately y5 equals e to the minus t, that comes from the real part being minus 1, cosine here, this is i times 1, the imaginary part is 1, so we'll just have cosine t, and y6 equals e to the minus t, sine t. So these two solutions to the differential equation come from having these two complex conjugates as roots of the characteristic equation. And notice now we have six solutions for the sixth order differential equation. I claim they're all independent. The Ronskian of, the, of all these six will be non-zero. It's a big mess if you want to try to compute that, but try to do that. And thus the general solution looks like y equals c1 times 1 plus c2 times e to the t, plus c3 times e to the minus t, plus c4 times t e to the minus t, plus c5 times e to the minus t cosine t, plus c6 e to the minus t sine t. And there we have it.